What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another Credit Card News live stream. I'm Cal Barton. I hope you're having a good weekend so far. Ending it off, you know, pretty well. Danny, thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. And again, I want to congratulate you on the Amex Prime business card. I'm sorry, the Amex Amazon business prime card. That's a good job. I'm I'm always good to I'm always glad to see and hear of people getting new cars, getting approved, getting credit limit increases because that's what I'm trying to help people do. That's my mission. Um I just want to say hello to Shanika. How you doing? Jorge, what's up? F Davis big support group. Raul, it's good to see everybody. You know, I, there's a lot of familiar faces here. I mean, everybody, I know you guys. So we have a lot to talk about. We got a ton of stuff to talk about. Christoph, I see you. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, man, it's good to see you, man. Johnny Jimenez. All right, so let's get started with the... Uh, news this week so first credit card delinquency rates and balances are on the rise all right so make sure i'm on here yes yep be good here all right so they're on the rise highlighting consumers reliance on credit cards consumers who were more than 90 days past due on their credit cards continue to add their credit lines between Q3 of 2019 and Q4 of 2021. According to a TransUnion study of nearly 6 million consumers uh, during that period, consumers who were 90 days late on their credit cards decreased the amount paid beyond the minimum payment. But consumers who were current on their bank cards increased the amount paid beyond the minimum payment. So consumers' decline in liquidity started 12 months before severe delinquency and increased across all credit card tiers. Most consumers reached 30 days past due three months prior to serious delinquency. And that's a sign that a a segmenting of customers based on their liquidity changes nine months to a year beforehand is useful. So listen, this is, we see reports like this every single week that, you know, because of the trying times, because of economic hardship, because of, you know, the remnants of you know pandemic related uh, lockdowns the economy took a downturn and people are using credit cards to make up the difference um, with you know inflation happening with everyday items so that's happening there i want to let you guys know here's a few points here in this next story the x1 credit card so this was featured in my last video and uh which was the four the four credit cards that will guarantee you guarantee to show you your starting credit limit with just a pre-approval so no hard credit pull and th- those four credit cards were the apple card the x1 card the fnb fnbo evergreen card and the uh dover cashback mastercard something of something to that effect so i i got a lot of well first off i got approved for this card pre-approved and i actually accepted it because everybody said hey go ahead and take the offer so i went ahead and took the offer it's getting shipped out. I haven't got the physical card yet, but um, I'm a little excited for it just to try it out. And I've been seeing a lot of reports from people in the comment section of that video that people are really excited because they're getting large credit limit offers and they're getting approved for limits that they would have otherwise never been approved for. I'm seeing $20,000 $20, limit, $10,000 limit. I think one or two $30,000 limits with the X1 card. So it's really good to see that happening. Raul said he was pre-approved for the uh, X1 at $30,000. Wow. That's amazing. Now, let's see. You have an accepted offer. See, it's on the table for you whenever you want it. It's still going to be there for you. They're they're really doing like a public service at the moment. Um, It's it's if you want it, it's there for you. So I just wanted to congratulate everybody on that. Um, Next up, we have uh, Chase. Uh, has a uh, credit limit increase uh, portal, Uh, there's a way to get verified. So um, you can actually uh, go to your Chase. Um, If you have a Chase card, you can go into to the main page and then go to uh, account services drop down. There's a drop down menu right around the middle of the page. 
and you can see uh, there, there might be an option for you that's going to be dependent on the person um, and it may be targeted. But there's a new option allowing you to increase your credit limit with no hard pull. So historically, Chase, you know, in the last few years, you weren't only able to increase your limit with a hard credit pull if you if you wanted a manual increase. And so you would only um, in this case, you can actually manually trigger that increase when they show you that offer on the home page. And so people are really excited about that. And this guy actually had three different offers. So he, he had the opportunity to increase his limit on one of his uh, freedom uh, freedom cards uh, and you know it's good to see that happening so next story we have here Navy Federal I know a lot of you love Navy Federal it's like the number one uh, you know credit union in the world it's got over 10 million uh, members of that credit union so this person said credit Navy Federal has to be the best so he started the credit game in 2018 with zero cards. Navy Federal, um, and so now he has the Navy Federal Credit Union flagship card was his second card he has ever gotten. I know, Danny, you want that flagship card. I know, I remember that. And he said, I think it started out between $5,000 and $8,000 limit. Boy, has it grown. Amazing how generous they have been to someone that had a low credit score and just getting started. So He's showing you, he's showing all of us that he's got a $40,000 limit on that flagship card. So in the past year or so, it was it was shown from other data points from other people that you could only go as high as 30,000 points because they kind of restricted their uh, their the highest limit because of, uh, you know, they wanted to limit their risk exposure with the, you know, with the lockdowns and everything. But now it's looking like that's going away. You can exceed that $30,000 limit. Um, and here's just further evidence, another data point showing you that you can get up to a 40,000 plus dollar limit on that flagship card. So, um, it's there for you if you want it. Next we have, um, Apple is set to launch a savings account that you can deposit daily cash into. So Apple has announced that Apple Card users will soon be able to deposit daily cash and um, yeah, card rewards into a high yield savings account, high yield. So I'm very interested to know how high is that yield? Because, you know, I have the SoFi, I'm, I primarily bank with SoFi and right now they have a 2.5% uh, APY or interest rate per year um, with that account. I want to see if it's anywhere in the 2% range because I, I wanted to be competitive here, you know? The account will be from Goldman Sachs, who has also issues the Apple card. Unfortunately, neither Apple or Goldman Sachs have released what the APY will be on the account, but it won't have any monthly fees or minimums. That's really good to hear because it's, this is like a fintech, right? Because you're partnering with the Apple card, which is seen to be as, you know, forward uh, future facing as possible. Um, Account holders will be able to add additional funds from other sources like bank accounts as well. Apple Card users will be able to easily set up and manage savings uh, directly in their Apple Card wallet. Uh, once users set up their savings account, all future daily cash received will be automatically deposited into it or they can choose to continue to have it added to an Apple Cash card in wallet. Users can change their daily cash destination at any time. So I think this is a no brainer because, I mean, if you're going to park, you know, a lot of you told me that you don't use your awards on a daily or monthly basis. It's more like a multi-month basis. It's more like a, you know, a whole season or half a year basis. So if you're going to set your, your money somewhere, you might as well have it automatically go into a, a savings account that's going to earn you some interest um, if, if if that can happen automatically for you and you, you earn a couple dollars, you know. And depending on, depending on how much you have in that account, it could really add up. So that's uh, that's pretty good to see that they're offering new uh, new benefits or, or a new product to the market. And, uh, you know, Apple said that they're going to continue down this path to try to offer more banking services. So Apple has shown a propensity. They have shown a large interest in getting into the banking sector, you know. So. Next up, we have a story is coming in. Americans continue to pay for inflation with credit cards. So this is 
you know, harkens back to our first story. Credit card debt continues to spiral higher as consumers struggle with rising prices and depleted savings. In August, revolving credit card inc increased by a staggering 18.1% as total consumer debt surged to a record $4.6 trillion. According to the latest consumer credit data from the Federal Reserve, total consumer debt increased by $32 billion in August, an 8.3% increase on an annual basis. That was well above the $24 billion projection. So people are increasingly just falling on those credit cards to handle any sort of excess um, need that they need, you know, in monthly spend, whether it be for groceries, for gas, you know, anything that they may need and want, they're going to use a credit card for because it's to them, it's, you know, it's a it's an endless fund source. So the unexpected thing Americans now blame their credit card debt on. Here it is. Americans credit card debt levels rose to 88 I'm sorry, $887 billion in the second quarter of 2022, according to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. And the number one reason why they cite this debt is emergency and unexpected expenses, with 46% of debtors citing an emergency or unexpected expense, including a medical bill, home repair, car repair, or some other emergency unexpected expense as the reason they carry the balance month to month, according to a new creditcard.com report. The solution to this is a tiered, I'm sorry, is a tried and true rule espoused by nearly all the personal finance bigwigs. Build up an emergency fund and there's good news on that front. Savings accounts like these are now paying far more than they did in the past. And listen, I am a testament to that because again, the SoFi uh, checking account that I have, I'm, I'm seeing uh, interest that looks like cash back. I mean, the amount of interest that I'm getting on my account, when you have a little bit of savings in there, it really starts to add up. And I can see myself earning, you know, a few hundred dollars off of that alone. So uh, for this year, but I, this was like a jumping off point, this, this story that got me really interested. And, and that's why I had to ask, let's see where are we at here. I'm going to jump around a little bit, but uh, associated with this, this hold on to that 46% of debtors say that they, a emergency fund, an, an unexpected emergency uh, resulted in them using a credit card month to month. And so here's a survey from uh, CNBC. They're using that source from Bankrate. 56% of Americans can't cover a $1,000 emergency expense with savings. That's... I mean, most Americans cannot cover $1,000. And so when they took a survey, they said 44% said they would pay from savings, which is good. 20% said charge it on a credit card and pay over time. So I'm assuming that when they say pay over time, that means carry a balance and incur interest charges. 15% pay the bill and cut other expenses. So they're cutting, are they cutting the food budget? Are they cutting... What are they cutting? Are they not going to drive as far? Are they not going to work a couple of days? Who knows what that's what they're cutting out there? All right, borrow from friends and family members. That probably is the worst thing. To me, that's probably the worst thing to do because you don't want to, you know, those you don't want to have that sort of relationship with a friend or family member. Now you have you're responsible for paying them back, and if you don't, now your relationship is tarnished right it's hard to come back from that it just puts an unnecessary strain on that relationship from my beliefs and then four percent said take a personal loan so i asked you guys the same question just a few hours ago and you told me something similar you said um 53 said pay from savings and that was just in the survey 44 percent would pay from savings so that's better that's over 10 percent better so I'm happy about that. But what's concerning, and maybe this question was not worded or the answer was not worded as specific as possible or as, as it needed to be. 36% said charge a credit card and pay over time. So the problem with the pay over time is that if you, it, it depends on what you mean pay over time. If you, if you mean pay over the course of a week or pay over the course of 25 days, then that's great. You still pay within 
your grace period and you don't have to pay any interest. But if pay over time means pay over the course of the winter season, then that's a problem. So, I mean, ideally, and people in the comment section uh, were, were commenting back saying that they would charge their credit card to earn the cash back or the points and then immediately pay it off with their savings. And I would do it that way. That, that's the best possible, you know, way to handle that. And then 7% say pay the bill and cut other expenses. 2% said borrow from fan, friends and family members. Let's see what uh, the previous poll said. 10%. So five times the amount of people in the initial poll said that they would uh, borrow from friends and family members. I'm glad that you guys are smart enough not to do that. I don't think you would, uh, you would want friends and family members borrowing money from you and vice versa. You wouldn't do it to them because that's just a bad look, right? You down bad if you do that. And then 2% said, take a personal loan. But you guys comment and let me know if you feel the same way. What, what would you choose in the comment section? Let me know. So let's move back to uh, the next story. This is a big one here. And this is why you're the name of this stream is the new U.S. bank card earns up to 6% cash at Walmart, Amazon and more. So this is the more they're going to earn. It's going to earn 6% back at Ace Hardware, Amazon. What is that? Anthro? I don't even know. Anthropology. Anthropologue, Apple, Bed Bath & Beyond, Best Buy, Chewy, Crate & Barrel, Disney, Home Depot, Ikea, Kohl's, Lowe's, Lulu, Lululemon, Macy's, Menards. That's probably a regional store. Let me know if you know what a Men Menards is. Is that like a grocery store? Pottery Barn, QVC, Restoration Hardware, Target, Walmart, Wayfair, and Williams-Sonoma. So this, is, this seems like a really strong offering from U.S. Bank. I currently have their um, U.S. Bank Cash Plus card and I use it for utility payments and I like it for that purpose. You get 5% back in that category. It's one of the only credit cards that allow you to earn in that bonus category. And then, so here's some other stipulations or some um, requirements with this card. You get 6% cash back on combined eligible purchases each quarter with two retailers you choose. So they like this model here with a $1,500 limit. All right, so you get 3% cash back on eligible purchases each quarter in your choice of one everyday category like wholesale clubs, gas and EV charging stations, our bills and home utilities. I like that. And you're getting 1.5% cash back on all other eligible purchases. Um, and then 5.5% cash back on prepaid car and hotel reservations booked directly in the reward center. So that last part is really important to me. So basically that your base earnings rate is 1.5%. Typically with a car, with a card, it would be 1%. So I like the fact that it's it's half a percent better so that it meets that threshold to, you know, to, you know, I, I consider the Capital One Quicksilver card with this 1.5% flat rate to be the um, the minimum threshold for a good, you know, for a, an okay all around card. But I'm glad that it has that 1.5% minimum. Now there's no word on the annual fee, but similar similarly structured credit cards like the uh, Amex Blue Cash Preferred card do have a $95 annual fee. So many people are expecting this card to have a $95 annual fee. And we still don't know what the sign up bonus will be, but I mean, you can probably guess it's going to be between two and a $300 sign up bonus. Oh, I got some help in the comment section. Thank you guys. Um, so Frager Hoskin, welcome to the stream. You said Menards is like Lowe's I'm in the Chicagoland area, so Midwest thing. Okay, so it's in the Midwest. It, I'm not familiar with that territory too much. I've been to Chicago twice, but um, all right. So I, I thought it was. I thought you're buying food at Menards. Did I pronounce that right? But um, you're buying lumber, not food there. Okay, I got you. So. I want to let you guys know, what, what do you guys think about this U.S. Bank Cash Plus card? I also want to say that I really like the look of this card. I, I like it. I, I don't say, I, let me let me walk that back a little bit. I don't, I like the look of this card. I like the colorway. I like the, you know, when the Amex came out with their new revamp, uh, you, with their everyday card, their blue cash everyday, everyday card. I like the blue. Um, you can see the design of the U.S. Bank logo in that pattern. It looks kind of like fish scales, but I, I like it, what they did there. It's a signature car. So with Visa signature cars, you're gonna at least have a $5,000 credit limit. Um, and 
And with Visa Infinite cards, you're going to have at least a $10,000 limit. And I'm, a, I'm actually going to get into Visa Infinite in my next video. So stay um, tuned for that. Um, next, I want to let you guys know, please like this stream. Um, if you want to see more content, more live streams like this, you want to participate and you want to get in the comment section, like this stream for me. I really appreciate that. So next door we have buy now pay later is still a credit score blind spot. And so what do I mean? What do we mean by that? U.S. consumers signed up for billions of dollars of buy now pay later plans last year. Almost none are reflected in their credit scores. So Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion began allowing buy now pay later companies to report their short-term payment plans earlier this year. But some of the biggest players in the business, including Affirm, Klarna, and Afterpay, aren't yet doing so. So, you know, all this good performance that you're, you know, that you're exhibiting and all of the buy now, pay later, um, you know, transactions that you're making are not being counted and they're not being, they're not working towards improving your FICO score. So we definitely want to see that happening. And I, I will, you know, hopefully by next, this time next year, that's going to be a commonplace, um, part of your, uh, your, your, your credit report. So definitely got to work on that with these companies. Next, so we have Google Select Coinbase to take cloud payments with cryptocurrency. So Google said it will rely on Coinbase to start letting some customers pay for cloud services with cryptocurrencies early next year, while Coinbase said it would draw on Google's cloud infrastructure. The deal announced at Google's Cloud Next conference might succeed Yeah, Cloud uh, Conference might succeed in luring cutting edge cons companies to Google in a fierce, fast growing market where Google's top competitors do not currently permit clients to pay with digital currencies. The cloud business helps diversify Google parent Alphabet away from advertising and now accounts for 9% of revenue up from less than 6% three years ago. And it's expanding more quickly than Alphabet uh, as a whole. So next door, we have nearly half of Gen Z. Do I have any Gen Z, Gen Zers or Zoomers as they call them in this stream? Let me know if you're if you're a part of Gen Z, let me know because I feel like I don't have too many um, that watch my content. So millennials uh, to rely on buy now, pay later this holiday. As shoppers stretch their holiday budget, a survey of a thousand consumers from the customer serv service technology uh, firm Blue Dot found that four in 10 respondents said they plan to pay for their holiday purchases with buy now pay later services the survey the survey found that almost half so 48 percent of gen zers said they plan to use buy now pay later services this holiday season followed by millennials it, it, just about the same 47 percent, and then 40 percent of gen x and 14 percent of baby boomers so baby boomers got that money right they they're they're racked up 19 percent said they are using buy now pay later services because they they're low on cash 80% of respondents said they plan to shop via retailer uh, mobile apps the same amount or more during the 2022 holiday season than last year. So more than half uh, at 55% said they plan to use retailers mobile apps because they are easy to use while 38% said they are looking for discounts. So I'm definitely looking for a discount and I'm, I'm using Amazon, but I'm not using, I, I almost never use buy now pay later on that, uh, on that app. Do you plan on using buy now, pay later at all? Have you gone holiday season shopping? Are you spending a lot of money for your you know, friends and family that you're not borrowing money from? How much do you usually spend? You know, that's, that's actually a good question. How much do you plan on spending during the holiday season on, on presents? How, how much are you gonna spend? Is it gonna be you know a couple hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollars, you got a big family? I'm curious. So next door, we have credit card swipe fee amendment, amendment has been pulled from the defense spending bill. So this is actually, this could be good news depending on how you looked at this. Uh, we've been reporting on this the last, you know, uh, over the last few months that this could be uh, a problem for credit card reward systems because it would cut back on the profit that credit card uh, companies would make. So a last minute bipartisan effort to package a credit card swipe fee amendment into a larger spending bill was ultimately unsuccessful. 
So Dick Durbin and Roger Marshall pushed to slip the Credit Card Competition Act of 2022 into the National Defense Authorization Act, prompting alarms from banks, credit unions, and other financial service providers who figured that the move would upend credit card loyalty programs. The Credit Card Competition Act is aimed at diluting the market power of card issuers, Visa and MasterCard, and would require several changes, including the requirement that merchants have at least one network for credit card transactions unrelated to Visa or MasterCard. So this was supposed to help out merchants by allowing them to kind of diversify or pick and choose the best rate of, you know, of transacting that per any specific purchase with. But the problem is that it would provide more competition. The banks didn't like that because it was going to cut into profits and the consumers, possibly us, we would be left with, you know, new, new revamped credit card systems, reward systems that were less lucrative for us. So they're probably going to continue to still fight for that. We just got to keep an eye on it. Next story, we have Juniper forecasts 121 billion virtual card transactions by 2027. So I've actually dipped my toe into vir using virtual cards quite a bit this year. Um, this is kind of a, a new uh, feature that new cards are uh, allowing you to have. I would say about 60% of credit cards have this feature now, but it's not, it's by no means is it all of them yet. So I, every time I review a credit card and I talk about one, I always, I always have to highlight what their virtual card um, system looks like and what sort of privileges and, you know, in inside of the app. For example, the X1 card has a pretty cool one where it automatically gives you three different types of virtual cards that you can create. And you can create those, you can create as many uh, simultaneously as you want. So if you want to sign up for a subscription, you have a subscription virtual card that you can create that will automatically cancel I believe the next day or something like that. Then they have a virtual card that's a one-time use. And so whenever you use that virtual card one time, it's gonna be locked up after that. So it can never be used again. So whoever, whatever merchant you use it with will never be able to charge that card again. I like that. Um, and then you have the ability to set a spending limit, a monthly spending limit on a, a specific virtual card. So if some merchant decides to double or triple charge you, and you know, you know exactly how much that um, purchase should be on a monthly basis, then it will automatically deny any further purchases from that um, from that merchant automatically. So the digital integration of virtual cards into digital services like Apple Pay and Google Pay will drive a 340% increase in virtual card transactions from 28 billion in 2022 to 121 billion by 2027. Um, virtual card transactions through mobile payment methods will account for 53 billion of the 121 billion transactions forecasted that year. So that's up from 5 billion in 2022. Uh, virtual cards randomly generated are randomly generated card numbers linked to a payment account uh, will be a key market driver of consumer adoption of contactless payments in rapidly developing economies such as India. So, and I want to be I want to make this clear, um, if anybody doesn't know on the stream what a virtual card is, a virtual card is just a digital card that has a link to your actual physical, physical card that's temporary, that can be broken at any time. And so you can set the parameters of where that connection breaks. And so it's just a loose tether. It just allows you to kind of have a front card for your real card so that if you're in a, you know, you go to a merchant that you don't trust, you use that virtual card, it's a one-time use, and they never get the actual information on your physical card, so you never have to call an issue, of, you know, um, call fraud detection or call the bank to get you a new car sent out, and you don't have to waste time that way. So it's, it's really, uh, it's a cool feature. Next up, we have the dark web marketplace um, called Biden Cash. That's an interesting funny name so this dark web marketplace called biden cash hands out 1.2 million stolen credit cards as a promotion so now even hackers are taking a page out of big advertising's playbook to promote their ill-gotten personal financial d details over the weekend the stolen credit card marketplace called biden cash announced they were offering a free giveaway 
of a million credit cards. Promoting the leak on multiple other sites, the credit cards could come from multiple sources, including from malware forced into online shops, individual user malware attacks, or from breaches of companies who store credit card info. So this is, <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, man. And this is why you want to use a virtual cards in some instances, because you don't want your credit card information getting into the wrong hands. So, guys, I asked you in a poll, what does your wallet look like, look like right now? And most of you said, well, 24% said a bifold. I hope it's not thick like this bifold wallet is. This looks terrible. This looks like a, a baby boomer's wallet. I hope there's no baby boomers in here, but uh, an old, older man's gentleman's wallet. They keep in the back pocket. It's messing up your... You know, your, your alignment and your spine, that's tough. Uh, most of you said at 41% said a slim wallet. Now, I used to carry one of these a few years back, and it did okay for me. Um, the, the problem I fell, I fell into with these, this type of wallet is that over time, it just broke down. You know, like a, it, it seemed to break down faster than the, than the bifold, and I just saw, you know, it started peeling. Maybe you got to get a, a more expensive wallet, which I've done recently. Uh, 16% um, set a metal wallet, which I have. And just so you know, I actually upgraded my wallet. And I want to say um, shout out to uh, Sledge. I don't know the full name, but one of my audience members, Sledge, he recommended this wallet. And I said, you know, let me try it out. And I've actually been really happy with it. It's uh, the Exter wallet. Let me let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is the Exter. Tell me if you know what I'm talking about here. Have you seen this style of wallet before? So basically it has this trigger on the side right here and it pushes those cards up. So let me go the other way. It's got the trigger on the side like my old wallet, but it pushes them up, fans them out in a cascading pattern. And what what I really like is that it is uniform. It's really consistent at the amount that it pushes the cards up. No matter how, how fast I hit this, it's still the same amount. And then it's a thicker, has a thicker base to this trigger right here. It's all, it's like all leather. And then I have my tracking device right here. This is a tile and it just fits in this slot. But I also really like that this fits like six cards. If you can see, it fits like six cards, including metal ones in the center. And then I can open it up and I can actually put more cards in here and I can just, you know, this band, this elastic band allows me to put more cards in here on this side. And then you can actually put cash in this side. So I really like this one. It's an extra. I have a link on my website, by the way. Um, where is it at? My website. This is what my website looks like. If you look at the third link down, which I have, I have all links to everything I have going on online. But uh, if you want that wallet, it's there's a link on my website. I just want to show you that and thank you to Sledge for um, bringing that to my attention. All right. So, yeah, guys, what, what do most of you have? What, what kind of wallets do most of you have? Richard said, I have the um, I have a metal wallet that's similar. OK. Metal wallets, you know, I think what did it start with? It started with like the. Um, What's that wallet that started it out at all? It has the most ads out. The Ridge wallet. It's been going out, you know, it's been out for like maybe 10 years now. It's the most well-known uh, version. Corey said, I've seen the extra wallet ads before. They seem to look interesting. Nino said, I love those alpha minimalistic wallets. Yeah, man, they look good. They do, they do look good. Actually, this is how it looks in the uh, the promo material. Check this out. That's alpha, right? I know this is not for the ladies. I'm sorry. Um, but I think they might have some, some tough stuff for the the ladies on their website. I didn't check the whole uh, the whole site.
Raul said, I have the Titan X wallet and it's similar to yours. Okay, I haven't seen Titan X. I'm gonna have to see another. I'm listening to you guys, so I'm gonna have to um, check that out. The Titan X, I'm gonna save that. Titan X wallet. That sounds cool. I'm putting that in my um, my notepad right now. Gotta take that. Cheryl, thank you for the super chat. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. Don't forget the feminine wallets. Okay, I'm gonna have to see. I'm gonna have to make a note of that as well. I wanna um, I'm gonna have to find a good a good version for the ladies. I really appreciate that. Good looking out. Walter said, I have giant hands and wa those wallets don't work for me. So so what kind of wallet are you using, Walter? Are you using that uh that bifold? Are you using a, so, like a passport wallet? Something like that? One bridge, what's up? You said, um, are you a fan of Ripaverse? I don't know what that is. Does anybody else know what Ripaverse is? I'm gonna have to search that. I, I hope this is not a. It sounds like a joke, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna take you at your word. You know what I mean? I could anything could be named anything here. Nino said, where do you put? That's a good question. Nino said, where do you put your wallet? Front pocket or back? I put it. I put it in my front pocket right side front pocket because it just i mean especially when you have a metal wallet it just it's too it's just too thick you know what i mean you sit in your back pocket that's going to be hurting you you know it's it doesn't have any give because it's metal it doesn't have any give so um let's get to the next story here so uh, i asked you guys in a poll also, where would you tell someone to invest their money? I probably could have also worded it. Um, where would you invest your money in 2022? So 51% said real estate. 8% said crypto. There's still some people in my audience that are that are long on crypto. I got to salute to you because everybody's shorting that. Everybody's selling off. And there is, it is a down market for crypto right now. I mean, stocks for that matter as well. But crypto just took a beating over the past few months, right? 22% said stocks and 19% said gold. So I'm, listen, I'm an S&P 500. I'm a, you know, uh, index fund buying stock trader. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put that on rinse and repeat and call it a day. I don't really get that involved because I just don't think it, it, it matters. But 51% said real estate. Is anybody in in my comment section involved in real estate? Do you own like Airbnbs? I think that's really cool because that's a, you know, that's a business that you have a lot of, uh, you have a lot of say in you, you go in daily to operate that business. Um, so if you operate Airbnbs, I, that's really interesting to me. So I wanted to ask you guys, this is kind of like a public service announcement, and this is also just to make everybody aware, and I also want to find out what your experience has been. Have you had any issues with FNBO credit cards? Um, so 15% 15 said no, all good over here. 6% said yes, they lowered my credit limit. And then most people, 80% said they didn't even know what it was. So FNBO, FNBO is uh, short for First National Bank of Omaha, and they're known they're a credit union and they're known for giving out high limits they're featured in my last video and they will approve you for a credit card and they will show you your credit limit before you actually apply and before they pull your uh your fico you know before they trigger a hard credit pull so i've noticed a trend of people commenting saying that hey they're one of the people that are decreasing credit limits without any sort of warning, with no good reason, decreasing people's credit limit. And I, it, it really 
made me pause because I thought I saw some really good um, examples and testimonials from people saying that they loved FNBO. They were really, you know, liberal with giving them access to credit and they had a pretty good experience with them. So it was kind of news to me. It was kind of shocking to me to see that. Um, and then also as evidenced by here, um, people are 6%, I think is more than, you know, more people than there should be saying that their credit limit was lower. So I know a lot of, you know, some of you have uh, FNBO. I know Danny, you have FNBO card as well. Uh, Richard, you said FNBO said they approved me and then months later I applied and they rejected me even though my score went up. The reasons they rejected me didn't even make sense. I will say this from my own experience and I got approved as well. And I think that they, they've been changing things up recently. Somebody said that they may have changed their uh, access to their um, their bank to uh, a geofence situation. So if you if the bank is geofence, that means that it's restricted to a certain state or a certain region um, of the country. And then they only let people in that in, in to be a member or, or, or apply for their products if you live in that region. So yeah, that might be the case. I need to do more digging on that. All right. And then again, everybody, if you, is anybody new on the stream? Thank you for attending the stream. I appreciate you being here. But if you could like that stream, press that like button. It's going to look just like this animation does here. And it's going to allow me to bring you more live streams just like this. If you like that, just hit that like button. I want to talk to everybody. I want to hear, does, has anybody had any good wins this week? I know, Danny, you got approved for the Amex business. Uh, I get this all mixed up. The Amex, Amex business card, prime card. But did anybody else get approved for a new card? Are you looking forward to that uh, that new U.S. bank card? And did you get approved for a credit limit increase? So I want to shout you out. Jorge, uh, Jorge said, I would, I would like advice opening up an account with fintechs like Chime or Upgrade. Okay. I've talked about Chime on a video um, months and months ago. I can definitely uh, revisit that. Upgrade, I'm not too keen on focusing on because I've seen people don't really want to see Upgrade. I've seen their products and they don't look appealing. There, there's, there's some weird uh, kind of stipulations with their products. Yo, Plumber, I, I, I listen, that's a Plumber said Capital One gave you a $150 credit limit increase. I'm just going to go ahead and say, you know what? Good job on that. I know it's small, but you got to celebrate all wins. Like, you know, you got to celebrate the wins. Dark dude, what's up? You said, hey, Cal, I made it to a live one. Nice to be rolling with you. Listen, it's good to have you in the live stream finally. I'm glad you made it too. Um, I've seen you commenting before and I, I appreciate you, uh, you stopping by. Uh, Johnny, you said I got my Target red card upgraded to a MasterCard a red card with a $1,000 credit limit increase. Nice, dude. I like that. I like to hear that. $1,000 limit. That's all good over here. Shout out to hot to Johnny. Tony Perkins, what's up? You said I got a $1,200 increase with Amex. Which card do you have, uh, Tony? Which card is it? So I just want to make sure I got it right. Good job, Tony. $1,200 on the Amex. And Amex is known for really giving people increases when they want it. Did you get the uh, 3X? Well, you probably didn't get the 3X increase, but they're known for um, tripling your initial credit limit on that first increase. So it's good that you got over a thousand dollars. Yeah. 
Nino, Nino, listen, Nino's been here since almost day one, man. It's good to have you. And you said got got your credit uh, increase with the Verizon Visa signature for a five thousand dollar increase, and it was a soft pull. Nice to hear. You know, interesting enough. Let me just go ahead and give you a. Oh wow. That's good to hear, Nino. I actually got a um, an increase with the Verizon Visa as well this month. I completely forgot about it. It wasn't five thousand dollars, though. I think it was like three thousand dollars, and so I think I posted it on. Well, maybe I did, but um, yeah. And you, I think you even told me before that uh, Synchrony Bank is known for giving um, higher credit limits. They're also known for taking away credit uh, card accounts as well, and uh, Danny knows about that. Cheryl, you said, believe it or not, Capital One increased my credit card limit by $2,000. I was so shocked. Listen, because you got you have good credit. You have great credit, I'm sure, Cheryl. And that's why they increased it. Go, Cheryl. Get those increases with the hardest um, credit card issuer to get increases with, Capital One. Good job on that. I like to hear that. Gary Graycar. Oh, I, this is exciting. You said Gar uh, Boomer here. Right now, best long-term investment is government one bonds. Right now, 9.62% APR. Okay, thank you. Listen, dropping knowledge in the stream. Thank you, Gary. Uh, I'm going to definitely just do my research on that. I like that, that um, APR there. That's really strong. I mean, listen, you you can only uh, on good years with the on the average year with the S and P five hundred, you're gonna earn around what seven to ten percent. So that's awesome. Thank you, Gary. Jorge, you said the City Costco Visa is now have to face serious competition versus the U.S. Bank uh, Shopper Cash Visa. We still need to know what that U.S. Bank Shopper uh, Cash Card does. It have an annual fee? If it doesn't have an annual fee, which I can't see a scenario where it does not have one, but if it doesn't, then it's going to be one of the best opportunities on the market. I think at six percent for for major categories like that, I that would be sensational. But the Costco visa, my problem with Costco is first you have to shop there. So the the segment of the population that's going to shop at Costco is going to be much smaller. And then my problem with the Costco visa is that I, I what made it dead in the water for me is one, I don't shop at Costco. But two, you only can uh, redeem those rewards after one year, I believe. After it's like you only they only become redeemable after a year. And correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Danny said, I get uh, get paid this week and I'm planning on getting uh, on the bonds before November 1st. Wow. All right. So you get Danny on board too. This has got to be the real deal. Joe Ansman. I hope I pronounced that right. You got the uh, Venmo card increased by 2,700 bucks. Awesome. Joe. Good job, Joe. 27 listen it's it's tough to get uh, an increase of just a couple you know for most people a few hundred dollars so to get a few thousand dollar increase is great Dan, oh, I'm going to come back to a question, but Danny, thank you for the super chat. I said, have a fantastic night, everyone. Listen, have a great night, Nino. Thank you for attending, and I'm going to see you back next week, next Sunday at 7 p.m., man. Good to have you. So, uh, Zinjin Alpha, you said, any tips for Bank AmeriCard, no cash rewards? I keep getting denied for a credit line increase, and a product change seems to be always unavailable. 
I'll have to take a look at that. Is if that's Bank of America, then um, I'll have to look in specifically what the the best strategies for Bank of America, which I haven't done research in yet. But typically, the the first places to start is you know to put make that your main credit card. Spend as much as you can on it, at least thirty percent per month, and um, and do that consistently over a period of like three to four months. And that usually does the trick to get at least one increase. Uh, but I would have to do some research into Bank of America. There might be some other, uh, you know, hacks that you can kind of look into. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, Jay Claiborne, what's up? You said, I don't know why, but I get a $1,500 increase on my Quicksilver card, but I always get denied an increase on my Saver 1 card. Any advice on how to get an increase on the Saver 1 card? So Capital One is like the poster child for bucketing cards. And so um, the, the, the bucketing happens on a card, individual card basis. So potentially if you sign up for that card and you're they put you in that unfavorable bucket with that with the saver card and you may not be able to leave that bucket until either canceling the card and signing up for a new saver card um, or it might take a really extended period of time over multiple years so that might be the cause of your situation um, but with capital one it because it's a one of those uh, major credit card issuers they're just looking for high usage that's the best that you can do um, you can try some uh, other methods that I laid out in a few other videos with Capital One, like um, balance transfers, um, any sort of like offer. If you see any offers that they send you for, um, usually you see the balance transfer, but there's a few of the offers that you might see in the mail or online in the app. And you wanna go ahead and take advantage of any offers that they are pushing to you because it just it's more data, more favorable data that they get into their algorithm to um, to give you an increase. Danny, thank you, sir. Listen, man, you're so generous. You said another great stream today. Cal, are you going to get into any business cards? You know, I've really been on the fence about this. Um, it seemed like a, a fair amount of people weren't interested in business cards. I know, I think you were one of them, but um, I I am always entertaining the possibility of business cards. Um, I'm just not sure how well it will be received at the moment. Cheryl said business card, and thank you for the super chat, man. Listen, awesome, awesome, Danny. Cheryl said business cards are the best. All right, yes. I, I currently don't have any business cards. So, um, and I know that some of the, the good attributes of a business card is that they don't, some of them don't report to your personal credit report. And then a lot of them will give you kind of a, a, a either a very high limit or they'll have a really, it'll be like a charge card. And so they'll give you um, a lot of leeway on if you have a big spending month, big spending month, it will expand to accommodate that spending. Are there any good other really good features of having a business card? F Davis, man, you said great stream as always, sir. And I thank you, F Davis. I appreciate that. Thank you.
right. So, guys, I want to let you know I do this every single Sunday at 7 p.m. It was great to um, have you on the stream. We always kind of discuss uh, the latest credit card news, and then it's structured just like this. Um, and everybody, have a great week, and I'll see you next time.